Welcome to this service of Christian worship. The congregation of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church, our church leadership, the session, and I welcome you uh, to this uh, great cloud of witnesses that uh, are one in Christ. We are separated by uh, spatial distance, but we are one and uh, in uh, spiritual proximity and in closeness and unity because we belong to Christ who is risen and who is here. The Easter season continues. We're in the middle of Easter. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Easter lasts seven Sundays. So we continue to look at the resurrection stories from the gospel about uh, how Jesus uh, appeared to his disciples and what he had to uh, show them and teach them and us. So let us uh, prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. You may join me in this prayer if you have printed off the worship order. Let us pray. O oh God, I give myself to thee this day, thine only, thine ever to be. Amen. Our call to worship is based on 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Let us worship God. Let us offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Whoever believes in Christ will not be put to shame. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn, The Day of Resurrection, will be sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick. Hear now these words that come from Scripture in our call to confession. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please join me in our prayer of confession. O oh God, in your Easter rising, you shattered the power of sin and death. Yet we choose to remain in our tombs of doubt and fear, embalmed in apathy and selfishness. Imprisoned in our darkness, we refuse your light. We ignore those who suffer. We remain bound and blind. Saving God, forgive us and change us. Raise us to your life 
and love. Amen. Let us now join in silent prayer, confessing our sins. Amen. Receive the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Jesus Christ. And Christ did not come to condemn us, but to save us. Christ was born for us and he lived for us. Christ died and he was raised for us. Christ now lives for us and reigns for us and prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ Jesus is part of God's new creation. Behold, our old lives have already passed away and our new life in Christ has come. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Our prayer for illumination is a sung prayer. Uh, it is the hymn, Spirit of the Living God. You may join in if you wish. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Our scripture today comes from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, you will also be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a tree beside the church that I keep an eye on. It's a dwarf Alberta spruce. It grows slowly. It's not big. It's kind of puny, actually. But you know what? It's actually incredibly mighty. At least it is for a sparrow, I know. Once on my way into church, a, a sparrow sailed right past my head. He was so close that I actually ducked. Um, and it was, I thought, what's going on? And then a split second later, a hawk came flying past my head as well. It had its eye on that sparrow as its next meal. Well, hawks, as we all know, are deadly hunters, but sparrows are wily prey. The sparrow used me as an obstacle to slow down its attacker. The sparrow knew it could corner faster than its larger adversary if it flew close enough to me, and it worked. But once they were past me, the hawk was still on its attack, and I thought the sparrow was a goner. But that sparrow knew just what to do. It headed for home. It flew straight to that dwarf Alberta spruce tree. And it not only flew to it, it flew inside the tree. At the last second, the hawk flared his wings, put on the brakes and, and settled down landing at the base of that tree. And there it stood frozen, staring at the spot into which the sparrow had escaped. The hawk then began slowly circling the tree, looking for a way in, but finding none. After several minutes, the, the frustrated predator departed. The sparrow had won. It knew where to go for salvation. 
It hid itself within the source of its salvation. And in so doing, it denied death a victory. The sparrow's wisdom can be ours if we heed what God, through Paul, is saying to us in this passage. If you belong to God, which you do, and if you've been raised with Christ, which you have, because Jesus Christ is risen today, then make him the focus of your life. Your life is part of his life now. Your branch has been engrafted into his greater vine. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. You're caught up and woven into and absorbed within the great tide of Easter. Death can't chase you down. The devil can't snatch you up because you're already hidden away, deep within the heart of God. You're so covered by God's love that no principality or power can ever grab you away from the God who died and who is risen to save you. All we've got to do is hang in there by staying close to our source. Stick with Jesus. Go where he goes. Do what he does. Love how he loves. Keep your heart in God's heart, and God will keep your life in God's life. You may feel like a tiny sparrow in a world filled with hawks, but you too have your saving tree. You have the rugged, glorious tree of Calvary on which Christ gave his life to give you life. In Christ's sacrifice, your sin dissolved away. By his obedience, your perpetual wrong was made forever right. And through his resurrection, your dying destiny was rerouted unto God's Easter horizon of living hope. That's why Paul says, I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In her book, The Hiding Place, Corey Ten Boom wrote about being part of the Dutch resistance in World War II. When the Nazis invaded the Netherlands and began targeting Jews, Corey and her family, who were devout Christians, knew they had to act. Their home, which was just a half block away from Gestapo headquarters, became a hiding place for Jews, who they helped God save from the Holocaust. Eventually, the Ten Boom family was betrayed and imprisoned, in Ravensbrück concentration camp. Reflecting on that living hell, Corey wrote, you never learn that Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have. It is in darkness that God's light shines most clear. There is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. That is hiding your life with Christ in God. That is a description of what it's like to be hidden within the heart of God. In fact, that's where you are right now. Amidst this pandemic, with fears within us and a new normal around us that makes us feel vulnerable, despairing, and alone, the facts around us and the feelings within us may shake us to our core, but the truth is we are in God's core. We belong to God. Our life is safe within 
His care. Our destiny is tied to Christ. Therefore, we too shall stand with Christ in the resurrection to come. And in the resurrection, we can live right now. Like Corey, who provided a hiding place for desperate souls, reach out to share God's love today. We right now can't physically touch others, but we can care for one another during this hellish time so that together we all survive. Be part of God's resistance movement in this present moment. Share yourself by being loving. Love seems small, weak, but Easter demonstrates that love is actually the most powerful force in the universe. After all, God is love. And God's love is going to have the last word. Not some virus, not sin, not evil, not death. Love shall prevail over hate. And life, not death, shall win. Hide yourself within that truth. Hide yourself in God. And do not seek the world's perishing ways. Find yourself holy within Christ. Steep yourself in his way, truth, and life. As you do, you will discover the glad, open secret that Easter is today. As we come to our time of offering, we give thanks that God is our good shepherd. God always takes care of us. God always has. God always will. God has given us that promise so we also can give. The session met via Zoom Tuesday evening, May 5, and while the times are anything but certain, the session decided to affirm that God's care certainly is a certainty on which we can rely, and it is an example which we can follow. Therefore, session voted unanimously to keep our commitment of quarterly giving to our local mission partners, to the Family Crisis Shelter, to FISH, to the Dr. Mary Ludwig Free Clinic, to the Youth Service Bureau, and to the Montgomery County Chapter of Habitat for Humanity. In this pandemic, more of our neighbors are in need, and they are increasingly turning to our local mission partners, whose funding is way down, even though the number of people they need to serve is way up. Session believes that good stewardship requires us as the church to not be a cul-de-sac in which blessings are hoarded, but rather to be a conduit through which blessings are shared. We hope you share in this belief and commitment. The session thanks you for your continued giving to God through the church. As you give, we can give. If you are suffering financially right now due to this pandemic, take care of yourself and your family, trusting that God will take care of the church. However, if you are blessed and if you have the means to give, the session and I thank you for doing so. Whether we are physically present in the church or not, the bills continue to arrive. Session believes that our continuing work, witness, and worship is an essential part of God's good purposes here in our community and here on this earth. So we thank you for your giving to God through Wabash Avenue. As you mail in your pledges and offerings and gifts, our financial secretary will deposit them. Thank you, and God bless you. 
and let us now celebrate the abundant and generous provision of God for all our needs by singing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Let us unite our hearts in prayer, saying, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that as we celebrate the ongoing season of Easter, that we may renew our faith and our strengthen our witness in Jesus' name. So we are obedient in discipleship, humble in service, and fearless in the face of evil. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and its leaders, especially for our President Donald and our Governor Eric, that they may practice compassion and lead us all out of this pandemic. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For your creation, our planet Earth, that all people may be good stewards of its resources, share in its abundance, repair its damage, and protect its beauty. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the poor and the stranger, that they may see, receive a place of refuge, hope, and hospitality. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may find protection from the coronavirus, healing for their pain, and be restored to health and life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that together we may dwell in harmony. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that we may love them and be agents of reconciliation in the name of Jesus, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For all who grieve, that they may receive your peace, knowing that their loved one is risen and alive in the Easter life of our Savior, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For all who cannot believe, that they may sense your presence and know your love, for those who have been alienated from the church, that they may find fresh welcome and healing in your embrace and our care. For those who believe, but who have given up, that their hope may be renewed and their faith replenished and their joy restored. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. O oh God, we ask your grace, mercy, and blessing upon these persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. Almighty God, we thank you for receiving the prayers we have offered. By the power of your Holy Spirit, use us for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Why Should I Be Discouraged? It is sung by Cole Yeager. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shame come why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven home when Jesus is my portion 
my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I'm sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender words I hear. And resting on his goodness, I lose my doubt and fear. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. From care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge us all, as Jesus reminds us, to be in the world, but not of the world. Let us hide our life with Christ in God, trusting that God shall provide our every need. And relying on that, let us share ourselves in this dark time now and in any and all times by being kind, loving, good, and knowing that as we do, Christ's Easter kingdom shall come. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift you up and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you.